Now we shift to our nation's housing crisis. If you are trying to sell your home, mortgage demand has fallen to the lowest levels in more than 20 years. Mortgage applications are down this week and more than 20% lower than at this time last year. Even refinance demand is down 75% year over year. News Nation's Paul Gerke is live for us in New Rochelle, New York. So Paul, tell us what this means for prospective buyers. Nicole, it means the opposite you might think. You hear demand is down and you think that there isn't demand for homes, but that's not the case at all. People want to buy homes, they just can't because they're either priced out or they're missing out in a hyper, a hyper competitive space. And our lack of suitable listings across the country stems from a massive housing shortage in the United States. Even the low ball estimate says that we're about 3 million homes shy of where we need to be. And the market is especially brutal right now for first time buyers and those seeking a single family home. I spoke with a realtor out here in New Rochelle, New York today. Her name is Lauren Hurwitz. She called those single family homes golden tickets. She says there just isn't much inventory out there and it's frustrating for buyers who are either endlessly waiting or end up ending up having to pay more than they're comfortable paying or they guess like good, they could settle for less home than they desire. That's also an option. Lauren doesn't think this bubble is going to burst yet either. She suggests if you're trying to sell, you should keep trying to sell because now is the time. If you're looking to buy. I would say stick it out a few more months, right? Go through the summer and see where we land at the end of this year. There are always going to be homes that need to be bought and homes that need to be sold. But I think a lot of people are sitting there thinking, I'll wait till the rates go back down. But I don't foresee the mortgage rates going back down. They are still pretty low compared to the historic highs that we've had if you look over the past 20 years. Rising interest rates will or should eventually bring housing prices back down, but so far we haven't seen any indication of that. In fact, in February and March, home prices were 20% higher than they were just a year ago. Nicole? All right, Paul Gerke live for us in New Rochelle. Thank you. All right, we're here to break down the housing crisis. Biz and tech journalist Shabani Joshi. Shabani, thanks for being with us. Hi there, Nicole. All right, are we heading for another housing market crash, Shabani? Yeah, you know, I was watching those statistics flash on the screen and they seem pretty dramatic. Um, but the one thing that you have to keep in mind out of context is that we were in record territory in the housing market. And when you start to see a cooling off those statistics off of a record market year, you, the statistics are going to be pretty mind boggling. And that's what we have going on here. And what people are the smartest people I know are always trying to do is to figure out, are we going to have a housing crisis? And the way they do that is by comparing the data comparing it particularly to what we saw back in 2008 with the explosive growth of the subprime mortgage market that really set the ground for a major collapse um, we're not seeing that right now Nicole all of this is really because of an unsustainable housing market really low inventory really low interest rates and as we just heard all of that is beginning to change you know, and this week, the World Bank sharply downgraded its outlook for the global economy. So are, are we returning to the 70s and stagflation? And for those of us who did not get an A in economics, explain stagflation. Yeah. I didn't get an A in economics, but I sure uh, learned what the definition of stagflation is and have had to, Nicole, because of all these comparisons and these predictions. Are we heading into a recession or are we heading into a stagflation? Stagflation is a period of high inflation and high prices like we have going on right now. But what's different about inflation and a recession um, and stagflation is low economic growth that creates um, the ground for just stagnant, um, a stagnant economy that is hard to revitalize. And so um, right now, the experts are trying to weigh in the, in the World Bank prediction of global growth of just slowing to 2.9 percent and, and, and basically saying from many countries out there, recessions will be hard to avoid. And all of this is related to COVID and continue COVID uh, slowdowns, supply chain issues, and just overall income growth um, declining, not just here in the United States, but it is a worldwide problem as well. Yeah, those those graphics there that we were looking at, you know, really laying it out in black and white there. Shabani, is there anything Americans can do? 
You know, that's a great question. Um, you know, the only solution for avoiding a, a catastrophic situation is really out of our hands as an average American. We're looking to the Fed to stabilize prices, stabilize the economy through the interest rates. Um, and then the other part is the re return of the supply chain. So to the extent that you are out there and, and can help get supply back online and increase productivity in the United States, increase um, employment, that is really the key to turning things around. And for the most part, that's out of our hands. All right. Shabani Joshi, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.